When the Washington Times named Richard Minniter as its editorial page editor last March, the paper called the conservative commentator's appointment the latest in a series of dramatic moves to boost the newspaper's global impact. But things soon fell apart at the paper founded by followers of the Reverend Sun Young Moon. Minniter says he was fired last month and has filed both a lawsuit and a discrimination complaint against the Times. The paper, meanwhile, is reeling from a management shakeup that included the resignation of its executive editor. Rich Minder joins us now to talk about just what is going on at the Washington Times. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Art. The Unification Church officials who control the company have replaced the publisher. John Solomon, who is the editor who came over from the Washington Post, has resigned without a public word of explanation. A lot of fine journalists who work there, but is the place imploding? A lot of fine journalists do work there, and they're in the middle of a tragedy not of their own making. Uh, this is a fight within the Unification Church, and the three top executives who were fired were in themselves Unification Church members to be replaced by other church members. There also appears to be a fight between uh, Preston Moon, one of the 13 children of Rabbi Sun Young Moon, and his other siblings over control of the North American Empire. And the paper has always lost money and has been subsidized by church officials. Well, that's right. I mean, in fact, the, the, the paper's lost money for more than 27 straight years uh, and losing about $40 million a year. And the church actually doles the money out in weekly amounts in order to keep complete control over the paper. Now, you say that after you were uh, first hired that you were coerced into attending a Unification Church weekend in New York. What happened during that weekend? Well, I was told uh, that it would be uh, very, quote, very good for me to go uh, to this, what well, I was originally told was a peace festival and it would be a business expense, a, a trip. Perhaps I had to cover it. I wasn't quite sure of this assignment by Thomas McDivitt, who was uh, the president and publisher at the time, and he was the guy who was largely going to decide whether or not I was made editorial page editor. So a lot of pressure was on me. I took it to mean that if I did not go, then my chances of being employed by the Washington Times would be roughly zero. So you felt you didn't really have a choice? I felt I had no choice at all. And, and what happened during that weekend? What well, to my surprise at the New Yorker Hotel in New York, uh, that um, Reverend Moon appeared, that it was a uh, largely a religious service that lasted several hours. Uh, and that uh, my boss's boss, Preston Moon, appeared on the stage alongside his father, uh, who was wearing a long, uh, flowing robe and, and a crown. Uh, and uh, it clear, clearly for a lot of other Times employees who were in the room with me who were true believers, it was an ecstatic moment. They were very excited that father was coming, as they called him, to celebrate their 90th, his 90th birthday with him. How did the whole thing make you feel? I, you know... I thought it was kind of creepy. I mean, why was I on a weekend as a quote-unquote business expense forced to participate in someone else's religious service? I wasn't there covering it as a journalist. I wasn't there as an observer, but they were using uh, my position at the paper right. or the position I wanted to force me to be there and be an actor in, a, in their drama, right. something far beyond my job description. Now, the Washington Times declined our invitation to send a representative to this program, but uh, I want to read a statement by the paper's acting uh, president, Jonathan Slevin. We put that up on the screen. The Washington Times does not discriminate and does not tolerate discrimination. We operate within the law and require the same of employees. I am confident that once the charges raised by Mr. Minotaur are investigated, the company will be fully vindicated. Um, you were How many lawyers you took it to, to write that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a few months ago, you were asked to stay home, to work from home, uh, while a personnel investigation was conducted. Clearly, your staff had some complaints about your management style. Well, uh, not that I was aware of. Uh, none of those complaints were presented to me. I asked for the reason. There were two compelling causes. One is that I'd made a joke about Reverend Moon to a co-worker, uh, which was then subsequently passed on to the president and publisher, who himself was a believer in Reverend Moon. Uh, that didn't play well. Uh, you know, newsrooms are often jokey places, and, you know, that's the nature of us journalists. We make jokes about things. The idea that that would lead to me uh, going home. In addition, I refused to sign a form saying that the vice president of human, Rela uh, human resources, that her son lived at my home. She wanted to send him to a, uh, uh, an elementary school in my state, not her home Using state. Using your address, which you wouldn't go along with. Right. Now, right. You, you, well, that, it, that's it, an illegal and illicit request, Howard. I'm not trying and, to minimize it. And uh, who the heck does that? <laughs> you previously led a group of authors in a suit against Regnery Publishing, sure. a contract dispute. The suit was ultimately thrown out. So some people are saying, is this part of a pattern with you? Well, two things don't make a pattern, Howard. One. Uh, two, uh, you know, again, in both of these cases, I was forced uh, into the courts, made numerous efforts to settle with Regnery. In fact, Regnery's just sent us a settlement offer. Uh, and we made, uh, I spent from July up and through November trying to come up with to some settlement with the Washington Times. You also but, say that you were asked, you, the editorial page editor, the vice president of opinion, were asked to help attract advertisers to the Washington Times. What were you supposed to do? Well, uh... You, you tell me. I mean, they... Uh, they Meet with them? 
they wanted uh, they wanted me to recruit advertisers to use uh, contacts and connections found in the course of news gathering and turn that over to uh, you know to the advertising department to work and your more reaction closely to that request well that's ridiculous why explain why well I mean that's just not what what I do I mean I've won awards as a journalist as an investigative reporter that's not what I do I mean there are it's these are two different professions you don't uh, take the heart surgeon and, and have him argue your case in a court of law uh, I've got about half a minute. I mean, now that this has uh, gone into the courts and the uh, charges are flying, so what do you want to happen? What do you want to see as the ultimate outcome here? Well, I'd like to see uh, some resolution of the contractual, the breaches of contract. They need to pay me the money that they owe me. For the last couple of months. For the last few months uh, and under the, under the contract. Uh, but secondly, I think, you know, there needs to be some change in ownership of the Washington Times. If this paper is going to survive and the worthy journalists who work there are going to have a future, a real shot at a future, it needs to be outside of the confines of the Unification Church. So you want the church to sell the paper to someone else? Why not? All right. Rich Benedict, thanks very much for joining us.